Greetings homebrewers, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Beer Baron Brewing, and we are going to be making some beer with my new custom-made electric brewing setup. For the beer, I have a New England IPA with a custom recipe that I made, uh, Citric and Mosaic Hops. I'm going to be shooting for around 7% ABV and about uh, 56 IBUs. So a little bit about the rig. Uh, this is my second time using it. I've added some insulation. This is a 7.5 gallon pot Bayou Classic. Uh, I've added uh, quite a bit of stuff, which I'll go over. I really wanted to focus on the controller first. This is actually a 120 volt electric brewing setup. I have uh, the weldless connections here for the element. It's a stainless steel element from Brew Hardware. 2250 uh, total watts, which is the max that you can draw on a 120 volt system. I've added a couple extra things. It's actually a solid state voltage regulator with the potentiometer. I have an indicator for the element when it's on and the, a two-way control uh, control switch here. One will, if you set it to one, it'll op be operated by the solid state voltage regulator. If you set it to number two, it's just a direct pass through from the in, uh, input uh, wire to the output out to the element. And that's more for uh, getting as much efficiency as possible. When you have this thing cranked up all the way, you're not getting all of the wattage over to the element because there are some losses in that re voltage regulator inside. And then over here, I have uh, one, a, a voltage uh, readout here. It's got the wattage, the kilowatt hours, my incoming voltage, and then how many amps I'm currently drawing from the entire system. I also have a fan, which is actually drawing air from each side. Um, and I really should have put this in a larger box. This is, I believe, is a six, uh, six by six by four. It really should have been an eight by eight by six, but this is still gonna work for my needs for right now. I have a little fan here that's uh, drawing air in, in over here and pulling it out so as this gets warm, this should keep things nice and cool. I also have the 120 volt outlet here. This is running the fan and then this is gonna be running the pump which is over here on the side of the kettle. It's one of the uh, 12 volt solar pumps. I just have a simple 12 volt power supply here which I'll plug in and I'll use as I need. Uh, I got some silicone uh, piping here to go up to my custom made um, temperature uh, setup, which is also the uh, for the sparging. I have this set up here, uh, trying to keep things as simple as possible for the recirculation. I actually have for the I have a little 45 degree angle with a uh, half inch barb to create a whirlpool inside, and then I have a false bottom just to keep the uh, grain bag off of the element so it doesn't scorch. So here we're going to start at about, oh, I couldn't get the time, but it's starting at, it's 3.03 .03 right now on uh, June 23rd, 2019. And what we're going to do is we're going to reset this and get this started to start at zero. And we'll see exactly how many kilowatt hours we use and how long it takes to go from currently 63 degrees up to 152 degrees Fahrenheit for first strike. So here we have the controller. Uh, what I want to do is we need to get this up to uh, 152 to 154 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for first strike temperature. So what we're going to do is set it to number two. The indicator light will come on and then now I'm drawing a total wattage over here. Uh, total wattage is a function of voltage so I'm pulling about 17.65 uh, amps. So we'll let this run for a little bit. Uh, as we start to uh, warm up here right now we're starting at uh, 63.7 degrees and it's currently 305 so we'll see how long it takes for a system like this to get up the temperature and currently we have I believe it calls for two gallons of water in there for the initial strike for this partial grain recipe okay so we're at our mashing stage we are holding steady at a 152 degrees uh, give or take 152 and a half I've added in my uh, grain bag here and I've added the grains uh, it's going to be steeping in there and recirculating for the next 30 minutes or so, uh, maintaining uh, the temperature with about 130 watts of power. So we will leave this to do its thing and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, we've completed the mashing stage and uh, what we're doing now is we're getting the two gallons of uh, grain water up to a boil and then we'll be adding our dry malt extract and our first uh, addition of hops. Uh, I've connected this over to the recirculation port here. I got a 45 degree angle and uh, it's only, like I said, only about two gallons in there now. 
and I got my hop screen in there getting ready to uh, accept the first thing of hops. I got my controller up to uh, full power. It's bypassing the voltage regulator at the moment and uh, so far everything seems to be uh, going well. So one minor note here, I uh, ruined the grain bag here and they're not very expensive but uh, the elastic uh, is too uh, small for the diameter pot that I have so it was uh, basically stretched over here. I used some aluminum tape to kind of hold it in place while I was recirculating. Uh, not a big deal. It just means I'm going to have to get a larger bag, maybe have some extra slack that, that comes down about uh, a quarter way on the pot here so I know that uh, I'll have enough of a bag to have it recirculate and not s fall back into the pot from the elastic band. All right, so we're at the second flavor hop edition, and we're holding... A good boil here at uh, 1,034 watts, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. It's a nice, uh, good rolling boil. Uh, certainly have plenty of uh, headroom to spare, but uh, I'm nearly finished. And uh, what we'll do is uh, add one more infusion of aroma hops, boil for about another five minutes, and we should be done. Okay, we're done. Uh, the boil just all finished up here. Put the last edition of Aroma Hops. Uh, just curious on how much uh, power we use. We use 3.3 kilowatts. Uh, my electric rate's about 7.97 cents per kilowatt, so it was very, very cheap to uh, brew this compared to using a propane system, which I've normally done. Uh, I'm drinking a Freaktoberfest pumpkin ale in the, actual, in the middle of June of all, of all times. Uh, this is about three and a half gallons, as I mentioned, and we're now going to have to get that to uh, cool off here before I go and pitch it into the fermenter. Uh, normally, I have a 50-foot uh, counterflow wort chiller that I built, but uh, it's a bit overkill. Instead, I got my old immersion chiller. That's a 25-foot coil, but I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm actually going to run the wort through the immersion chiller. I've already sanitized it on the inside. I'm going to put some water and put some ice in here and then use the pump. Uh, the pump should be work enough to cool off the wort here. And we'll put it back into the uh, uh, boil kettle here. Once it's down to temperature, I'll bring it uh, to a fermenter here on the floor. And we'll get this pitched.